What's up, Bay? Get your calculator ready because today I'm going to show you how to use the power of trigonometry to build a 3D infinite scrolling marquee. We're going to do it all in Webflow Interactions. All right, one of the main keys to this build is that I'm using explicit pixel values for the width and height of the image. Now, if I check out the image, there's also another little trick going on here. If you've done an infinite marquee before, you know that we're just scrolling the content halfway and then duplicating it. So you can see we've got Wayne's World at the top left here. And then if I come into halfway in the image, I've got Wayne's World again here. Requiem for a Dream is here, followed by Saved, and back here is Saved. So just follow my mouse and you'll see that this image is actually uh, two duplicates of the same image. Now you'll see that the actual dimensions of the image are 3200 pixels by 676 pixels. And then I set the height to be 864 and the width to be 4090. Now the main thing I'm going for is the height. I want it to be 864 pixels tall so that it takes up most of the height of the viewport or a reasonable amount. So in order to make it as tall as I want it to be, I do need to find a scale factor. So if I take 864 divided by 676, I get our scale factor of 1.278 approximately. So now if I take 1.278 and multiply that by 3200, then I get about 4090, which is our width. So that's how I'm scaling this image to make it so it looks good in our hero. The other important piece about this image is that I have set the transform origin to be on the left in the middle. So left of 0% and top of 50%. And then if I come to image wrap here, we can see that I set a child perspective of 1000 pixels. You can think of kind of this as the, the distance the camera is away from the screen, and this will become more clear in the diagram later. If we scroll up, we see we've set position to relative, overflow to hidden, and width and height to 100%, so it takes up 100% of its parent, which is this uh, div with the class name of right. It has no sizing, it's set to be 50% of its parent, which is a flex box, and position relative, height 100%, and it's got some background color and some other things that don't really matter. Here's the one that's on the left. I've just got some padding so that it houses this heading that we have here. And then everything is within wrap here. And this has the same height value and a flexbox display set on it. Now, in order to get the desired 3D effect, we're going to have to select image here. And we're going to use a Webflow interaction. And we're going to set a rotation on the Y axis. And I think something around like negative 20 degrees is what's going to be to look good. But you can, of course, modify this. And I'm going to show you how to change the math to make it work. But so essentially, we're going to shift it by negative 20 degrees. And then we'll add some other scale transforms to shift this thing by some negative pixel value. Now, you can see as I'm translating it to the left here, it's kind of like growing because we haven't actually pushed it away from us. So we need to push it away from us as well. Oops, not the Y. We'll use the Z here. And so I'm going to provide a negative pixel value for that. So we need to scale both in the X axis and the Z axis while this is happening. And now we're gonna see how to use trigonometry to figure out what those values are. I'll go ahead and delete these because we won't need them anymore. All right, you've been waiting to break out that calculator. Well, here you go. So I've got a little diagram here. This is my eyeball. It's sitting about a thousand pixels away from our image, which is this black line right here. I'll go ahead and make it a little thicker so it makes a little more sense. And then we have 20 degrees here between there and kind of the 2D coordinate plane or whatever I would think about it as that way. And then I've got a coordinate system. So negative X is in this direction and negative Z is in this direction. So what we want to achieve with our animation is that we want to take the image and we want to translate it in the negative X direction and in the negative Z direction at the same time so that it looks like it's sliding through to our eyeball. And we don't want to translate it all the way. It's Remember, it's duplicated. So we want to do it about halfway. And once it gets halfway, we're going to snap it back to its original position. So the user is tricked and thinks that this thing is just infinitely scrolling past our eyeball. Anyways, uh, now it's time for some math. So let's go ahead and have a look. Now, the very first distance I want to get is the distance down here. So half of this piece right here. And that's going to be how far I need to translate in the negative x direction. And then the other piece of info that I want to get is how far in the z direction I have to translate it. And that's going to be this piece of info right here. So the equation to get this is, remember SOHCAHTOA, what's that, like fifth grade math, you're gonna take cosine of 20 degrees, and we're going to multiply that by 40, 90 pixels, and then we're gonna take all of that and divide by two and see what that equals. So if I come over here and I say cosine of 20, and notice I'm in degree mode right here, close that parentheses, and then we'll multiply by 40, 90, and that equals 3,843. Divide this by two, we get 1,922. So let's say 1,922. One, the equation to get this other piece of the triangle is going to be the tangent function, so tan of 20 degrees. And then we'll multiply by that value we just got, 1,922. 
and that should get us what we want. So let's go ahead and plug that into the calculator. So we'll take tan of 20 and close parentheses, multiply that by 1922, see what that equals, we get 699. So our magic numbers here are 1922 and 699. Now in Webflow, we'll head over to the Interactions tab and we will create a page trigger animation. We'll do it on page load. And we're going to start an animation and I'll call this Marquee 3D Demo. Okay, now the very first thing we want to do is set as initial state our rotation in the Y axis. So that's negative 20 degrees. And then right after that, we're going to set the initial state of the X and Z axes to zero pixels. Now it's important to set that initial state because we're going to change it and then want to reset back to that. Now we have our next animation, which is a move animation. And we've got our duration of 40 seconds. We've got an easing of linear. And then in the X axis, we're going to go negative 1922 pixels. And in the Z axis, negative 700. I rounded up that 699 to 700 because I thought it looked just a little bit better. After that, now we want to snap everything back. So X will go back to zero. We could change this to pixels. I don't know why I have it percent there. And the Z will go back to zero as well. And the duration there is zero seconds. So it happens instantaneously. And if we play, we would see if we waited 40 seconds that it goes all the way. But let's change this to something like six seconds, just so it's really fast for you. And we can see in six seconds if it does end up repeating. And I just saw Wayne's World and look, it got all the way to the end and we need to set up a loop. So let's go ahead and preview it on the loop. I'm looking for Wayne's World and Requiem, there it is, and it just reset. So maybe you could have seen it just a little bit and you could try to tweak with the values there, uh, you know, since we're, we have some decimals to deal with. But in general, I think you got it. And that is how to build a 3D marquee. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to recommend another video that you'll like right here. It's gonna pop up right now. So be sure to click on that and check out some more cool Webflow stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.